All right, welcome back to the series where we make Tetris in Godot. Now, before we get started, this will be part two of the series, but actually what we have done in part one uh, is going to have to, well, not have to get deleted, but since we updated to Godot 4.3, we have the introduction of tile map layers instead of tile maps, which will be deprecated. So what I am planning to do is rewrite what we did in episode one, and we will just start from scratch because what we did in part one uh, will not work in the future. And I have made some changes in uh, the layout of this series in which the tile map layers will be more useful than what we have set up right now. So unfortunately, if you actually went ahead and followed along with part one, we will have to do some steps again, but this will be for the greater good in the future. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so we first start off with actually deleting what we had, unfortunately, and we simply make a new node 2D. Now in here, what we want to do is utilize these new tile map layers that Godot has introduced with 4.3. So what we can do is simply add two of these. One will be for the board and one will be for the active uh, tetromonos piece. What we then want to do for the board is we want to obviously set it up. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go over here to the tile set. We want to make a new one. We want to make sure the tile size is 32 by 32. Then over here at the bottom, over at tile set, we want to open it and we want to add our Tetromino's tile set here. So what I've made here is just a simple tile set of the seven Tetromino's pieces and one for the border. All right, so in order to draw the borders here, we can go ahead and come over to the tile map at the bottom. We select our gray tile and we select the rect tool right here. Then what you want to do is make a 12 by 22 uh, rectangle, like so. And then we simply hold right click here and then make it so that there's a one tile border around here. So this way we have set up the borders here, so we can actually get started with the scripting already and placing the Tetromino pieces on the screen, as was planned for episode 2 of this tutorial. So let's go. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to make a new script, and we want to actually go ahead and start this up. Then what we want to do is we want to actually start with defining some functions. So before doing this, what I have made beforehand is actually the different pieces with the different rotations here in an array. So I will leave this in the comments below so that you can use this and uh, follow along with the tutorial quickly. So this one is for the i terminal, so we'll just take this as an example for now. Uh, what this basically means is that this will draw the actual tile and it will set the rotation. So in this case, the first one here is at zero degrees. So it will just be an eye, but it could also be a flat one or another way. And this way we can actually go ahead and programmatically set the pieces and different rotations. So we always have a different piece. Then while we are on the topic of actually setting up our variables here, we want to also set up another couple of variables, which will basically be an array of our uh, tetromonos above here, which we'll use later on to actually randomize the tetromonos placed on the grid. And then we also want to make a second array, which we will be using to actually rotate through the different tetromonos pieces. And we will need this in order to actually make sure that we don't use the same piece twice after each other. Uh, we will get to know this more later on. Then we want to set up the columns and rows. And then we also want to include the start and current position into our code here. And some more information regarding the type of tetromonos. And also the atlas and next piece atlas, which we will use later on in this tutorial to calculate the next piece and actually show it on the screen here. Then lastly, what we want to do is we want to add the board and active uh, tile map layers to our scene here. So we can just drag them over here, hold control while we release. 
and this way we will have the board and the active layer. Now I would like to call this board layer and active layer to just further um, yeah, improve naming in, uh, in my head. <laughs> it depends what you want to do. Obviously, you can obviously rename this, but just make sure that you uh, know what you have changed it to. Then over here in the ready function, we want to go ahead and actually set up our game. So what we want to do is we want to call a function in here, which will be called start new game. And we actually define that down here. Now in here, what we want to do is we want to actually choose a tetromino piece we want to use to draw on the grid. We also want to set the color of this piece to match the actual tetromino so that the color will always stay the same based on the piece that it selected for us. And then we also obviously want to actually initialize the tetromino onto the board. So for choosing a tetromino, we can go ahead and set our current tetromino type, which we have set up right here, to actually be chosen in another function. So we will just call this choose tetromino. And then we can actually start writing out this function here. This will return an array. And we want to first start by defining a variable, which we will call selected tetromino. All right, so then we want to check if the tetromino's array we have up here with all our pieces isn't empty. So we can then shuffle the actual array and we take the first element in that array. So the first tetromino's piece. And we will set that to the selected tetromino here. So then if the array is actually empty, we want to use this full uh, tetromino's array here, which we have duplicated so that it always holds all of the tetromino pieces without actually um, removing them from the array like we do over here. So that we always have a piece that hasn't been chosen before. So let's write that right now. What we do is we actually set the tetromino's array. So the one where we initially take values from and we basically just set it to a full array again. Then we want to pick a piece and we want to shovel it. So basically what we do here, but this time we refill the actual array again from which we take values so that it is filled again and we don't have uh, calls on an empty array. So then lastly, what we want to do is we want to simply return the selected tetromino. And this way we have a randomized tetromino type every single time we start a new game here. So then what we want to do is we want to set a color for a specific tetromino type. So what we can do for this is we can set our piece atlas variable here to a vector 2i in which we will actually just simply take a look at all of the tetromino pieces and we want to find the current tetromino type. This way we always have the same color for the same piece and it won't randomize the colors when you actually play the game. So the player actually has a visual understanding of what piece is coming or what piece is uh, right there at the top. And then what we want to do is we want to initialize our actual tetromino piece. So we will do this in a separate function as well. Right here. Uh, did I type that right? Yes, I did. So we can do that right below this choose tetromino here. And in here, what we want to do is we want to start off with the current position set to the start position. So we always place it at the center top of our game area. So then we want to make sure we have the active tetromino. Which will basically be the current tetromino type and then indexed by its rotation. Now we use the rotation index to randomize the pieces here. So in case we have an L tetromino we can actually go ahead and randomize these rotations. So 90 degrees, 180, 270, etc. Then in here we want to call another function and this is also our last one, is the render tetromino. 
Now render tetromino is basically our main function, which will take a couple of parameters here. The render tetromino is expecting a tetromino, so basically the piece we want to render, then the position we want to render it in, and the atlas, which is basically the color of the piece. So what we simply do in here is we actually want to set the cells for every single block in a tetromino. So we write a for loop here for block in tetromino. We want to then set the cell on the board layer to the position plus the block. And then we also want the tile ID here and the atlas. So the tile ID uh, since I haven't explained it yet, it's actually going to be the tile that we have set up in here. So in our case, this is to zero. So if you were to change this, you would also have to change the tile ID that we have set up over here to match the value that is put in here. So keep that in mind. Then in this render tetromino, we simply want to pass our active tetromino together with the current position and the piece atlas, which we have set up in this function above here. Now, if we actually run this script, we make sure our scene is the main scene. We can see that we now have a border with a random piece every time we start up the game right here. Let's see if I can get a actual block with the same color oh, I, did, I did just there the uh, the i1 that was yellow so we can actually verify that every single piece has a different color and if the color i've seen before like right here we actually have the light blue um t i guess it's a t um the tromino that actually stays the same color so the player can yeah make it a bit more easy for himself to know what tile is coming up next and he can uh, plan his uh, attacks further. All right, so this was pretty much it for this video. Now, this was quite a fast video. Um, this was basically because I wanted to combine part one and part two into one video and tr kind of try to keep it the same length so that we don't really lose a whole lot of time over the uh, unfortunate loss of uh, part one here so i hope you enjoyed in the next video we will be going to take a look at the ways of that we can actually move the tetrominoes and actually let them fall down to the bottom of the floor and then in number four we want to actually detect these collisions and landing and then we have a another video for clearing lines and scoring and then we basically have some UI stuff we want to do, like a game over and restart menu. And then we want to polish and add some more features. And then the last video will basically be uh, some final touches and a wrap up of the tutorial. So thanks again for watching this second iteration of the Tetris tutorial. And if you have any questions, just let me know. If you don't, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.